Um, and by donating today, uh, our, our listeners could get some incredibly good, uh, great um, premiums. Uh, premiums like uh, are the CD uh, that we mentioned by Frederick Douglass, so, uh, um, that's read by Ossie Davis on some uh, momentous speeches, and tickets to the June 9th performance uh, at the Flushing Town Hall. Now, I think we're going to uh, listen to a little music uh, that was uh, recorded back in 2015 of the NEA Jazz uh, Professionals, uh, uh, Masters uh, at Town Hall, to give the, our listeners a little a little uh, experience of what they might listen to uh, when they attend on June 9th. That was a sample of the NEA Jazz Masters concert we recorded back in 2015 at Flushing Town Hall. We are giving away pairs of tickets to the uh, June 9th, 2017 performance uh, over at Flushing Town Hall for a, uh, an incredible uh, present, uh, presentation of the Queen Jazz Orchestra's Forever Sunny, a musical tribute to Sonny Rollins. For those who donate uh, $50, you will get a pair of tickets. Uh, we have two pairs to give away. Uh, they're going to go fast. Uh, if you call 516-620-3602, once again, 516-620-3602, or text w, the letters WBAI to the number 41444. What a great show. Uh, I'm looking forward to it and looking really forward to going to Flushing Town Hall. Um, yeah, the, I'm excited about that premium we have. And I'm also, as I've said earlier, very excited about our other premium. It's a one-hour CD of four speeches of Frederick Douglass read by the glorious voice of Ozzie Davis. Um, imagine hearing his rich sonotone. Um, uh, 
take us through um, inspiring words of Frederick Douglass. Earlier today, we were talking about pay equity. I have mentioned that this year is the centennial of the woman's right to vote in New York State. As we all know, in three years, we're going to have the national centennial of the woman's right to vote in the U.S. Frederick Douglass was a noted um, suffragist. He, um, all of his life, supported women's rights, and in particular, the women's right to vote. And one of the speeches on that CD is going to address just that very issue. So what a treat to be able to hear that. Um, please call in, and for $30, you can get that CD. Um, our pledge line is 516-620-3602. But if you're walking around out on this glorious um, Memorial Day weekend and uh, you can't call in, you can text to support us. Um, text WBAI to the number 41444. And for a $30 pledge, we will send you a one-hour CD of four speeches of Frederick Douglass, read by Ozzie Davis. For a pledge of $50, you'll receive two pairs of jazz tickets um, for the wonderful um, tribute to Sonny Rollins at the, um, by the Queen's Jazz Orchestra. Well, we have some folks who've called in, and we really thank them, but we really need more to call in. Our station managers watch the amounts that we raise and look to see which shows they want to continue to play. And we really love doing our show here at WBAI at City Watch. Um, we have such a great uh, calendar of guests that we will bring to this year. Um, we have an election year here in New York City. There's some great uh, candidates uh, from all walks of life who uh, are looking for a platform to talk about their agendas, uh, to talk about what they will do. Um, and donating money here uh, is, is easy. You just call 516-620-3602 or text the, uh, the letters WBAI to 41444. Um, and then you're able to get the CD that Francis talked about. Uh, or uh, if you donate $50, you'll get the pair of tickets to the June 9th. Uh, um, Edwina, excuse me. Uh, June 9th performance of uh, the Queen's Jazz uh, tribute to Sonny Rollins. Uh, how great would that be for folks to both support this ne this station and be able to see what a, a great show on June 9th? And um, as Larry was just saying, um, in addition to exploring the political and civic life of New York City, we're going to bring on a lot of guests like the one that's about to come up who's going to talk about the rich cultural life of New York City. And one of the things we want to do is delve into um, the areas that you may not hear much about on more mainstream media. Um, and so, you know, radio for the 99 percent. Um, great politics, amazing culture. Um, call 516-620-3602 to support WBAI. Well, up next we have uh, Clyde Boulard uh, from Flushing Town Hall, um, who's going to talk about his uh, his his location, his venue, his and the performance on June 9th. Are you with us, uh, Clyde? I'm here. Well, and I'm glad to be here. Well, welcome to WBAI. Hey, thank you. <laughs> well, you're joining us on our fundraising show, and uh, Flushing Town Hall has been a great supporter of WBAI and the City Watch show, uh, providing tickets through the years uh, to some of your great performances uh, so that our listeners could both donate to our station but at the same time uh, receive uh, tickets to see your shows. And you got a great one coming up here on uh, June 9th. Yes, it's a, a loving tribute to uh, Sonny Rollins, and it's, it's being um – sponsored and actually orchestrated by NEA Jazz Master Jimmy Heath, who's a good friend of his for many, many years. You know, they still speak together regularly every week. And this is his way of giving a benefit to a man who basically, I would say, has provided some essential jazz DNA to musicians. He's pointed a way of showing them a different way to improvise if they open themselves and study the work with the masters of jazz. You know, he's also a man who uh, probably has about seven or eight honorary jazz, uh, all music degrees, I would say, from Juilliard, uh, you know, Long Island University, on and on and on. He was actually given his um, jazz master endowment in 1983, and you know, many many of his compositions have become like jazz standards. You know, 
Um, and, and he's also worked with a litany of many of the greatest jazz musicians, the architects who helped the vernacular actually grow. So this is very befitting uh, to, to do for him, and it's something we want to do. And as a special surprise, I'm not saying it's going to happen <laughs> Definitely, but we are trying to get Mr. Rollins to appear at wow. the concert and wow. just be there to witness what we're doing for him. <laughs> uh, between Jimmy Heath and my good friend and jazz guitarist, a great guitarist, Saul Rubin, and Flushing Town Hall, we're trying to persuade Mr. Rollins to come. We're, we'll, we'll have a car come and pick him up and wine and, and dine him, whatever he wants. Well, I, as I said on the radio earlier, we use uh, Sonny Rollins' uh, um, music to open the show week after week. We Beautiful. are huge fans, and he is uh, one of the giants, um, and we hope that he's able to attend and, and, and perform, or at least attend. And, attend, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, and, and, and be part of this uh, momentous evening for Flushing Town Hall. Can you tell us a little bit about the venue? A lot of folks, you know, we, we we're always surprised, folks... Uh, around the city, they go to Brooklyn, they go to Manhattan, but coming out to Queens, tell us a little about your, your spot. Sure. Well, Flushing Town Hall uh, was incepted in, in 1862. It's been around a long time, but Flushing Town Hall is considered the jazz capital of Queens because no other Queens organization has presented continually on a, you know, a continual basis great world-class jazz music. That's one of the things we do, as well as providing an eclectic array of music and programs for the community, which is very Asian. But Flushing Town Hall definitely is a place that if you come there, you, you will see the same quality of music that you will see at any other jazz presenting venue. I'm talking about Lincoln Center, the Iridium, or the Blue Note. And we've had some of the greatest jazz icons in Queens, you know, performing there. Now, another thing is it's very germane because most people don't realize that the borough of Queens has had more jazz icons live there than anywhere else on the planet. And, I'm, and I can go down a list. It's, it's endless. Count Basie, Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane, Jimmy Heath, Clark Terry, Chick Corea, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holiday, Fats Waller, Benny Goodman, Tony Bennett, and even Phil Schapp, who is one of our greatest jazz luminaries here as far as history with Jazz Lincoln Center. So it's, it's just endless, and it's very germane, and we serve the community well. And any time you see any show, even if you don't know the name of the artist, you are assured that you will have a quality performance. You're listening to City Watch, WBAI, New York, 99.5 FM, and streaming on WBAI.org on the web. And you listen to Clyde Bullard from Flushing Town Hall. Um, so, Clyde, my question for you is about sort of um, translating or, or bringing jazz to newer generations. And um, I'll give you a little background of my question. Um, sure. My father uh, loved jazz. Um, it was a, a part of his being. He listened to it all the time. When I was little, you know, I was not having it. You know, I didn't want to hear it. I was like, oh, my God, why do you have sure. it on? As I got older um, and life sort of happens, I came to really appreciate it. And I really treasure the memories now of listening. My father passed away about a decade wow. ago. Sorry, so yeah. I, I treasure the memories of, of listening um, to his beloved music with him. And um, he was an African-American who sort of came of age at the height of the civil rights movement. Wow, and okay. I've always felt that it was very... Inter that music was intertwined with his experiences then. Um, when I try to play jazz music, you know, Nina Simone or um, Bird or Sonny Rollins for, you know, my nieces, nephews, my goddaughters, um, you know, they're sort of like me, you know, they're not having it. <laughs> so um, are there, is there, are there any programs that you're doing or outreach programs to, um, you know, make sure that this um, American treasure and original art form continues to be appreciated for generations to come. Oh, yes, we definitely have that in place. First of all, we have a monthly jazz jam. So uh, young or old musicians can come and attend uh, the jazz jam, and we have Carol Subhalter and her band who presides over it. So you can kind of 
learn to play and have a place that you can learn to express yourself in an improvisational way. That's one thing. The second thing that we have been doing since 2008, uh, the Queen's Jazz Orchestra, which is led by uh, Jimmy Heath. And there are many incredible musicians in that orchestra, Jeb Patton, Antonio Hart, Michael Mossman, etc. The orchestra was founded to keep alive the music of all of the great jazz icons that once lived in Queens, but also to help to nurture and generate the next generation of jazz musicians that are coming up. Those are two things that we do. The third thing we do is we try to present new jazz artists and groups to give them a platform and a place to perform. And so in all of these ways, we're trying to keep the American indigenous art of jazz alive. And we're trying to create a jazz matrix connecting Flushing Town Hall with all of the jazz presenting organizations in New York City in the five boroughs. We, that's something that's coming. We also have um, alliances now that we've formed with Jazz at Lincoln Center. We've been talking to the Jazz Foundation of America. And so we have planned concerts for children and programs for children and just everyone to keep this music alive because we're, we're competing in a world that is very dominated by reggaeton, reggaeton and house music, and all of that is legitimate as well. But jazz deserves also to have a place to survive and you, flourish. You know, we, I was talking to Edwina about the, the, the love of, of playing music on our show in between our guests. And as a lead into your, 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 your interview, we, we were playing a little bit of the NEA Jazz Masters concert from 2015 recorded at Flushing Down Hall. Woo! Uh, and it is a great piece. Hopefully we'll play a little bit more uh, sure. on, on the out uh, uh, take of this because we really want folks to see here. What an incredible performance. What an incredible venue. Um, you know, we are fortunate that you are donated two pair of tickets to the June 9th uh, show for those of our listeners who are willing yes. to donate $50 for a pair of tickets. Now, normally those tickets are $42 and $20 for students. Uh, right. What a great idea, though, to give students a discount. Um, uh, hopefully the schools and, and universities in the area and New York City and, and visitors and tourists understand that it's a quick s uh, ride on the 7 train or, uh, <laughs> uh, to, yes. or an Uber for, for those or, or a Lyft, not to take That's right. to just jump over and experience what uh, down t downtown Flushing has to offer uh, in food and experiences. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about why Sonny. Why, why, did, why was that the focus? Well, because he deserves it. I mean, it's, you, it'd be hard to find many uh, jazz musicians that has earned his stature. You know, he's, a, 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 he's considered one of the greatest living improvisers that we have. But look at, if you look at his history... Many, many of his songs have become like jazz standards. Air Gin, which is Nigeria spelled backwards, Doxy, Oleo, Pent Up House, on and on. But his, the, the, the strength of what he has given to America and to the world of jazz needs to be recognized and done now while this man is still alive to witness it. People love him. People have been inspired by his music. He has um, inspired musicians to explore themselves. And he is one of the architects of this art form. And we have to honor him now while we still have him. So for our listeners, I just want to say the website for Flushing Town Hall is www.flushingtownhall, all one word, dot O-R-G. And um, Clyde, is there a, a number that folks could call for information? Sure. Uh, 718-463-7700. So l tell us a little bit about some of the other uh, projects that you're going to be doing this year. You, you know, Flushing Town Hall always has a rich calendar. Uh, what, what else is going on and what are you planning? Well, we have been, we almost, I think we've finished our global mashups. We realize that we are in uh, a very diverse borough, which is one of the most diverse boroughs in the United States. So Ellen Kodadek, our fearless director, we've come up with a thing called Global Mashups, where we bring two bands from different 
countries together in one concert. Like we had Spain meets the Garifuna, Japan meets Puerto Rico, Mali meets Morocco, Taiwan meets, meets Jamaica, Thailand meets Tahiti, Cuba meets Hawaii, Scotland meets New Orleans, Haiti meets China. So we bring audiences that would probably never be together under the same roof at the same time into Fleshing Town Hall to see these diverse musics. So, at the end of the concert, both bands come on stage and they play together, which creates a completely undescribable blend of music that we've never heard because it's probably never happened before. So we do these kind of things. Fleshing Town Hall also has puppet shows, Latin music, um, jazz, R&B, folk music. It's very, very eclectic. And people should go on the website and look at what we offer because there are many different things for many different types of people. There's always something there that is family-oriented or for those who are adventuresome and want to see other types of diverse music. So, and I'm going to say the website one more time. It's www.flushingtownhall.org. Um, earlier, Clyde, I, I shared, you know, sort of my story of, of how I came to love and appreciate jazz. Um, yes. And for our listeners, um, my final question is for you to sort of share um, why it's important for you and what you think it means. Uh, what do you mean, uh, and jazz? Itself? Yeah, yeah, as an art form. Well, 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 it's it's America's only indigenous art form. Um, it, it it was at one time America's preeminent music. Not so much now, but it's been part of my pedigree. As you know, my father, C. B. Bullard, Clarence C. B. Bullard, was head of National Jazz for Atlantic Records. He was there for many years. And so jazz, for me, like you, it's an acquired taste. It's part of my life. I can't avoid it because as a child, I heard all of this great music, which at one time, like you, I thought it was gibberish. <laughs> and it, I, it took me many years later to realize, no, these gentlemen really know music theoretically and harmonically, and they can also play Broadway or classical music. Many jazz musicians, many of the greatest, were also classically trained. So for me like Phil Schapp, like Dolphin Kirk at WBGO, Jazz at Lincoln Center, the Iridium, all of these people in this jazz matrix are trying to keep this music in the public's eyes and in the air because this art form must not die. The music is ubiquitous. Jazz has influenced countries all over the world, and people gravitate to play this music to consume it and to listen to it. And so we and I, I'm just part of the, the legion of people that love the music and want to see it flourish and move on to new generations, which it is doing. So we really want to thank you, uh, Clyde uh, Boulard from Flushing Town Hall, for coming on and for donating tickets. Uh, for folks, you'd call 516-620-3602 and, and donate to WBI City Watch. And, and Clyde, we'll have you on again as, as the season. Please. But, yes. but we want to d dedicate the show to, to encouraging people to learn about jazz, to get into it, to attend on June 9th. Um, we really think it's an incredible opportunity, and uh, what, what, what a rich uh, tapestry uh, for New York City uh, that you add to. So thank you thank for coming you. on BAI. Thank you so much for having me, okay? Thank you. And on, we're going to play a, a little bit of the NEA Jazz Masters concert from 2015 at Flushing Town Hall for your enjoyment.
Welcome back to WBAI City Watch Show. We-